Hello, my name is Meredith Palmer and I'm a postdoc at Princeton University and I'll be talking to you today about how large predator reintroductions can re-establish landscapes of fear in recovering ecosystems. Large carnivores are thought to play a key role in structuring ecological communities through their effects on prey behavior and population dynamics. And in particular, predators are hypothesized to alter prey behavior by creating landscapes of fear or distributed hotspots of relative risk and safety that prey have to navigate to maximize their fitness. The behavioral decisions that prey make, such as where to go and when to forage, uh, based on these levels of predator activity, can have cascading impacts on broader community processes. So systems where predators have gone extinct may therefore become landscapes of fearlessness, in which prey become less fearful, occupy previously risky habitats, and modify those habitats by consuming more or different food sources. The rewilding of large carnivores is often justified based on the idea that this will reinstate these structuring top-down effects on ecosystems. Um, but there are still few studies to date providing evidence that predator reintroduction accomplishes these objectives. So the question that we'll be asking is, can historic carnivore reintroductions restore the fearful behaviors in prey that shape key ecological processes? So here we'll be examining whether fearlessness is reversible within a large herbivore community. And we'll be working in the Gorongosa National Park, which is located in central Mozambique. And when Gorongosa was created in the 1920s, it was renowned for its biological diversity and abundance of large mammals. These large mammal populations, however, were severely reduced during the following Mozambican Civil War, with greater than 90% declines across all monitored species. Now, in terms of predators, African wild dogs, leopards, and hyenas were completely extirpated, with lions persisting at only extremely low abundances. And since 2004, a public-private ecosystem restoration project has been working to actively restore wildlife populations in this system. And in June 2018, the restoration project reintroduced a founding population of African wild dogs. And it's the restoration of these large carnivores that provides an unprecedented opportunity to test hypotheses regarding the roles of top predators as ecosystem engineers. So a quick overview of the data we're working with. This is a map of the core area of Gorongosa Park. Our wild dogs were fitted with GPS collars, so you can see their ranging area is in light purple on this map and their core territory is in dark purple. And to monitor the large herbivore community, we have camera traps deployed in a grid across the entire landscape and video camera traps and road uh, transects running throughout the two main habitat types. So within the open floodplains habitat and within the closed dense savanna woodland habitat. So we ran our herbivore monitoring efforts in the 15 months before and 15 months after the wild dog reintroductions. And here I'll be focusing on the seven prey species that are most highly consumed by wild dogs in Gorongosa. Now these focal species vary in a number of key traits that may influence how they value risk resource trade-offs. These include size, diet, how often they are eaten by African wild dogs, and a number of correlated traits related to anti-predator strategies um, and habitat use. And so for convenience, I've divided these species up into hiders, which are smaller meso herbivores. Um, they tend to be dense habitat specialists who rely on crypsis um, and hiding to avoid predators, and they tend to be solitary or live with small groups. Um, and the other group being runners. So these are our larger grazing herbivores. They tend to live in open habitats and rely on vigilance um, and flight to see and avoid predators. And they tend to run in larger groups. And we anticipate that each of these two types of prey will respond differently to renewed predation pressure. So first looking at deal activity patterns. Wild dogs are active predominantly in the mornings and the evenings. And if we look across areas of high, medium, and low wild dog occupancy, we can see that after wild dog reintroduction, an overwhelming majority of prey species shifted their activity to reduce temporal overlap with wild dogs. And these effects are strongest in the riskiest areas of the habitat, um, so the highest wild dog use areas. If we then look at where animals are active within the landscape, we find species changing their activity again based on wild dog space use. So in particular, we get strong responses from the hider species, 
with these closed habitat specialists tending to increase their activity in, suggesting that they are shifting to safer, low wild dog use areas after the reintroduction. Now for a subset of our focal species, we were able to monitor vigilance and foraging activity. So for example, all studied species significantly decrease levels of exclusive foraging. So this is focused foraging with no vigilance behavior displayed um, after the wild dog reintroduction. And they did this across all habitat types and all levels of wild dog space use. Um, and lastly, for a slightly different subset of our focal species, we were able to look at changes in group size after the reintroduction. So our runner open habitat specialists increase group size in open habitats, while our closed habitat species, um, and also warthog, decrease their group size in closed savanna habitats, um, both responses in line with our predictions about how these animals would attempt to mitigate renewed predation risk. So despite the multi-decadal absence of apex predators from Gorongosa, we found that prey are recognizing and responding to historic predators in ways that appear to minimize predation risk. All of our studied species appear sensitive to the spatial and temporal patterns of wild dog activity. Um, some of the patterns of anti-predator response that we're detecting were general to all prey species such as the universal decrease in exclusive foraging, which hypothetically allows for heightened vigilance to spot these new predators. Um, of the predator, or sorry, of the prey traits studied, however, the runner hider closed open habitat specialist distinction appears to be the best predictor of behavioral changes. So for example, our runners tended to strongly decrease their temporal overlap with wild dogs in high risk areas while our hiders instead shifted their general overall activity to lower risk areas and decisions on ultimate group size, whether groups should increase or decrease and where was also dependent on this runner hider strategy. So within our site, we're going to continue monitoring whether these behavioral changes lead to downstream consequences for the broader ecosystem. And we also anticipate that these uh, behavioral decision-making strategies will change as the carnivore community becomes more complex and as more predators are reintroduced. And lastly, we're going to be looking to see whether renewed predation pressure changes the community structure of the wildlife within Gorongosa Park. Previously, the system was dominated by large grazers and is now dominated by small browsers. And we anticipate that uh, new predators in the system may flip us back to our original stable state. So thank you so much for your time. I'm happy to answer any questions now um, if I am able.